Dad, what's the future going to look like? Hey everyone, I'm Billy Tallheimer from Regent. Uh, pretty excited that I get to chat with you guys now having driven this Sea Glider vehicle. Uh, before we talk about that, actually, I want to take you back a few thousand years or so, really to the, the dawn of mobility. We have all this cool technology here today, but if you go way back, it was really in the maritime space that first connected the planet. So I'm talking about going back to the Polynesians as they explored the Pacific and, and found new island chains, the, the Dow and the exploration of the Arabian Peninsula, this is where mobility really began. And this is also how we explored the coastlines around the world. This is how humanity settled the land. We used the seas and because they were so critical, that's where we invested our technology. We built bigger boats. The Industrial Revolution built steamships. And as we did, we could explore new coasts. We unlocked trade and commerce and even war on the coastlines. And so when you look back, it's just incredible to me the amount of innovation that happened in the maritime domain over the first few millennia of humanity. But then when we got to the coast, when we made landfall, we've really focused there. We started to build here. We built infrastructure, we built cities. And so we had to move around the cities. So we built rail and roads and airports. And so the last century or so of mobility innovation has been focused on the land and in the air. And it's been incredible. I'll tell you as a pilot, as an aerospace engineer, walking up and down the runway here and seeing this incredible innovation in aviation, it's just amazing. But it's a little crowded and there are some issues. So what we're working on now is solving this. Because even with all of this hyper-focus on innovation on the land and in the air, when I'm traveling on a regional route, I'm still sitting in the airport longer than I'm in the airplane. When I'm moving on a rail or a road, there's still aging, crumbling infrastructure that costs billions, trillions of dollars around our country to mature. And so at Regent, we're taking all this incredible technology that we see out there developed for the air, the electrification, the autonomy, and we're going back to the water. And it turns out this is actually a really important space to focus because we settled here, 40% of the world lives in these coastal communities today. There are billions of people traveling these routes and we're not gonna solve that mobility problem with boats that look like this. And so that is Regent's focus. We're bringing this incredible technology to the oceans. Regent is a manufacturer of sea gliders. We are based in Rhode Island and we're developing this brand new mode of transportation, really the first since the helicopter, this hybrid of boats and planes for maritime mobility across commercial and defense missions, unlocking mobility around the planet. So to bring everyone up to speed, if you haven't heard of sea gliders, they're a new mode of transportation that float, foil, and fly. Sea gliders start on a dock floating like a boat, you hop on, you leave the harbor on a hull, and then the key thing in the differentiation of a sea glider versus sea planes or flying boats in the past is our hydrofoiling mode. We rise up on these hydrofoils. They give us wave tolerance of five feet and anything higher is pretty much a hurricane as the sea glider traverses through the harbor. You can see here as they lift up, the waves are able to go beneath us, allowing us to accelerate up to speeds of 50 knot as we move through the harbor. Then we float, foil, ultimately, Fly. We take off from those hydrofoils, fly on a cushion of air in the ground effect within a wingspan of the surface. Because we're flying it up to 180 miles an hour, we leverage advanced navigation systems and we simplify the control systems with our autonomous controls to left and right, fast and slow. But I'll tell you, this is way more than just CGI and Regent has been building and testing software in the real world for years. It started with our quarter scale prototype, 400 pounds uncrewed vehicle we call Squire. This proved in the real world, we can float, foil and fly. We can maneuver through those transitions for the first time ever. It showed that our sort of ragtag team of some of the best aerospace engineers on the planet combined with the best in the racing world of the maritime industry can resolve their differences and work together. 
and it proved that our software engineers could develop an autonomous flight control system to hold this vehicle at high speeds and low altitudes safely and in all conditions. And so now we're building even bigger. At 15,000 pounds, 65-foot wingspan, our Viceroy Sea Glider will be the largest electric vehicle ever to fly. Our prototype that we call Paladin is in the water right now at full scale, already with human crew. This Viceroy Sea Glider can carry two crew in the front, 12 passengers or 3,500 pounds in the back, and we are already working in the real world, also in Narragansett Bay, to expand our capabilities, rapidly accelerating towards flight. And just as we proved on our small scale version that we can have that weather robustness, that wave tolerance that really makes a sea glider what it is, we are very quickly expanding our capacity, expanding that envelope, moving up through our sea trials on the hydrofoils, flying within the next couple months and soon doing the seas. Now, critically important, a sea glider is certificated as a maritime vessel under Coast Guard jurisdiction, not by the FAA, as Cyrus said. And so we're working with the Coast Guard on our certification pathway. We submitted our design basis agreement. That's sort of like the G1 for you aviation people out there. Uh, and we're also working on the international side with the classification societies, with the International Maritime Organization for this incredible global order book. 10 billion in our commercial backlog. We have customers in the US, both coasts of the US and Hawaii through England, through the Mediterranean Sea, through the Middle East uh, on the Gulf and the Red Sea, uh, and into Asia Pacific, from Japan through Indonesia down to New Zealand. In all, we have customers across six continents in the world, but I actually wanna make this a little more clear. So I'll take you to New York, where if you wanna go from Manhattan to the Hamptons, you could take a bus for three plus hours, you could charter a helicopter for $1,000, or you could do a sea glider for the best of both worlds. I'll take you to Miami, where if you wanna go from Miami to the Bahamas, you can get on a boat for three or four hours. You, again, you can get on an airplane and pay a few hundred dollars, or you could do a sea glider, again, for the best of both worlds. I wanna take you to Abu Dhabi, and we have our incredible investors, SDF, in town as well. I've done this route a lot. Instead of two hours sitting in the car, we can get back and forth reliably traffic-free for 30 minutes on a sea glider. And so, while this company was sort of commercially focused in the get-go, very quickly we realized that the high speed, ease of operations, weather tolerance of the Sea Glider platform was also incredibly relevant in defense spaces. And so we have been on contract working with the Marine Corps for years now, developing this technology. In addition to the commercial benefits, they're also very excited about this low signature option because we fly so low, we can fly above sonar, but below radar. In addition, that baseline commercial vehicle, 180 miles of range with our battery electric version, could actually handle a lot of the contested logistics networks that face our Marines today. And so we began working and partnering and working up to the highest levels of defense and naval and Marine Corps leadership to say, what's next and what does the warfighter need in these contested Indo-Pacific battles that are facing us for the next decades? And they said, we need more. And that's why this year we launched Regent Defense a dedicated business unit, an expansion of our product line into a family of systems where we can support the warfighter in new ways, spanning autonomy, hybridization, and different size platforms. Now we start in Regent Defense with actually a defense derivative of our existing commercial all-electric vehicle. This is incredibly easy to operate and maintain. It's quiet, it has no thermal signature, it's a perfect logistics mission vehicle, and it's also easy for us to start and build right away. Now by taking out half the batteries and putting in a turbo generator, we expand that range from 180 to 1600 miles, enough to conquer that tyranny of distance in the Indo-Pacific. And we're productizing that same Squire platform you saw earlier as in a tritable drone vehicle. So now we can deploy hundreds, thousands of Squires throughout the Pacific. We can let them sit, turn on, take off in any sea state and go do any wide range of missions. And so Squire is also in the water right now. Now the benefit of sea gliders overall is their speed. That tyranny of distance in the Pacific means that speed is important. With that hybrid propulsion train, we can go from Guam to the first island chain in 10 hours. That takes a boat four to five days today. And from that first island chain, we can support an interdiction in the Taiwan Strait in something like three hours instead of a full day under sail on a boat. 
So this is really all about speed, the sea glider's ability to take off and land in a wave state, to be based on the water and then take off and fly at airplane speeds. We can get to the fight at the speed of relevance and then we can do our job. And so because of this incredible technology, we've been building our mission applicability with the Marine Corps and with other services. We started in that contested logistics mission, moving troops and supplies around the island chains. As the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Smith says, this underwrites the success of the naval campaign. But for us, that's really just where we started. Our team just got back from Japan where we talked to the commanding general of the Japanese Armed Forces. And he said that the number one thing that keeps him up at night is the ability to take troops home. We can't land in open sea states today and our rescue helicopters are sitting ducks. We've been working with partners on ISR missions, on anti-sub warfare missions, on being able to drop sono buoys and swarm as a tritable unmanned sea glider systems. And now with the launched effects mission to turn the sea glider into a bus that can deliver at 180 miles an hour from 1600 miles away, a suite of autonomous cargo on board. And so with all this interest across commercial and defense, we need to build. And so that's exactly what we've started doing in Rhode Island, commencing construction of our 255,000 square foot manufacturing facility. So this Regent Sea Glider manufacturing facility will be the home for all of our manufacturing operations, will enable us to deliver Sea Gliders to commercial and defense applications, and will scale into other opportunities worldwide. It will be a center of excellence for composites manufacturing in the country and allow us to integrate high power propulsion systems, batteries, motors, flight computers, everything. But with so much interest, particularly in defense, we've already started the need to expand from there. So we recently announced our partnership with Fairlead, one of the largest shipbuilders and ship maintainers in the US on how to co-locate, further expand US manufacturing capacity and partner with them on hardening assets. And so with so much news, you can imagine we're getting some serious federal the notice. Is, through their operations, building new facilities, hiring labor, they're a catalyst really for additional industrial and uh, economic development here in the state. So that's what Region is up to right now. We're working hard, we're moving fast. We're testing our full-scale Viceroy Sea Glider, what will be the largest electric vehicle ever to fly when we take flight in a couple months. We're expanding our commercial and our defense backlogs, our 10 billion in commercial backlogs and growing through the branches and we're setting up shop on this manufacturing facility. It is an incredibly exciting time to be building sea gliders. So once again, I'm Billy Tallheimer with Regent. Thank you so much for having me and uh, encourage all of you to, to come by our simulator outside the Truesdale tent. And uh, as you're eating in the dining hall, that's our full scale sea glider in the back. So uh, come on in, take a seat, maybe have your meal on a tray table and see how spacious it is. Thanks again, everyone, really appreciate it. The future is gonna be awesome.